What's up, everybody? How you guys doing tonight? Doug here with Leaving the Dream. Shout out to all my patrons. I see you in the chat. I see you out there, and I appreciate you, my host, for the support. As always, everybody, um, all the things I talk about in this video and all the people I talk about in this video are innocent until proven guilty. You can find my sources in the description below. I will also post pictures, articles, and my show notes in the Patreon notes in the Patreon feed. So go check it out. If you're interested, head on over to patreon.com slash Krennic and sign up in any amount. All right, let's get into it. As Louis K. Law, um, the former HPD police chief, was under federal investigation in 2016, Roy Amamiya, the city's former attorney general and managing director, Donna Leong, the city's former top civil attorney or corporation counsel, and Max Sword, who led the Honolulu Police Commission from 2016 to 2018, are alleged to have conspired to hide the source of public funds used to get the police chief to retire amid his corruption investigation and ultimately put him and his wife, Catherine Kailua, behind bars in federal prison. A jury convicted Kailua and his wife, Catherine, of conspiracy for framing a relative to keep him from revealing fraud that the couple used to finance their lavish lifestyle. Kailua is serving a seven-year prison term and his wife is serving a 13-year sentence. Amamiya Long and Sword all surrendered to the FBI yesterday and were arrested. They're all placed on $50,000 unsecured bond and they've all pled not guilty. So uh, I wanna talk about who these people are real quick for those of you who don't know. Ron Amamiya, he's the former city manager and uh, attorney general. Um, not much about his past. I guess he played baseball for Punahou in the 50s, UH in the 60s. Oh, thanks for the $5 super chat. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. That's generous, man. Um, so he played for Punahou in the 50s and UH in the 60s. He entered the state government in 1967 and became the head of the state office for consumer protection in 1972. And in 1974 was Hawaii's no-fault insurance commissioner. Already he's the head of the state office for consumer protection and the no-fault insurance commissioner. Um, and with the help of Governor uh, Ariyoshi, he became the Attorney General at the age of 34 in 1974. Max J. Sword, the former police commission chairman. Um, I got a little bit on him. He used to run track for Punahou, so we got a couple Punahou boys. I uh, ran track for Punahou in 1969. He ran the Icone and Ale Ale Catamarans in 1977. Um, he was an agent, lobbyist, and spokesman for Outrigger Hotels in 1988. He represented the Queen Emma Foundation in 1989 and was assistant to the chairman and CEO of Outrigger Hotels by 1993. Outrigger Hotels is a theme that you will see here. Um, and then Governor John Waihe appointed him the Legislative Salary Commission in 1994. This dude was appointed to the Legislative Salary Commission in 1994. Ironic that this whole scandal has to do with Louis K. Law's salary payment. It's essentially a payout um, to try to get him to not sue the department is really what it was used for. Um, let me see here. And then by 2017, he was the police commission chairman. He was on the police commission basically the entire time that I was in the police department. Um, and then Donna Leung, corporation counsel, the most powerful civil attorney in the city. Um, I found a couple Donna Leung, so I don't know which one is which. Um, one of them graduated from camp schools in 66 and one of them from Roosevelt. Uh, I couldn't get a clear answer on that. That was way back in the day. Does anybody know? Is she a Kamehameha grad? Or she went to Roosevelt? Had one at Kamehameha and one at Roosevelt. Um, she received her law degree from the University of Washington and her undergraduate from Stanford University. 
So she's a powerhouse. Uh, she was deputy corp counsel in 1983. She was an agent of the Hawaiian Trust Company Limited. Um, she was a partner in the law firm Cades Shoot LLP and was actually the attorney for Walmart in 2003. And I think that's when they were doing all these builds. Whoa. Mediv Monst TV. Yo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the generosity. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the super chat. Hello. Um, I never saw that name before. I'm glad you made it out. Okay, uh, so she was Deputy Corp Counsel in 1983, and she was an agent of the Hawaiian Trust Company Limited. She was partner in the law firm Cage Shoot LLP and was actually the attorney for Walmart in 2003. She was appointed to Senior Vice President and Chief Legal Ed Officer for the Outrigger Hotels in 2006. So I said, remember the Outrigger Hotels. Um, Max Sword was assistant to the chairman and CEO of Outrigger Hotels in 93. And Donna Leung was appointed a senior vice president and chief legal officer for the Outrigger Hotels in 2006. Kirk Caldwell appointed her to the City Corporation Council. Actually, Kirk Caldwell, I believe, appointed all three of them to their positions, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's get in the indictment. The indictment alleges that they conspired to circumvent City Council review of the payment and tried, but ultimately failed, to keep HPD officials quiet about it. So, the law says that anything over $100,000 has to be um, approved by city council. So naturally, this isn't new, this isn't something that only these three people do. Companies do this all over the place. Um, typically, if you have a payment cap before it gets approved by some board, then people get pretty creative on how to spend money. They will come up with like, $99,000 payments, three dollars payments in a week. Instead of just paying $300,000, they'll break it down like that to try to get it passed. It's not okay. The reason why they do that is so that a council of people can actually consider what they're spending and decide if it's good or not. That's important when it comes to taxpayer money. That's your money that they're paying out to these people. So they gotta stay accountable. That's why they have these rules. The charges allege that they tried to circumvent these rules, which backfired on them anyways. So in, um, if you want, go over to DougKrennick.com. You can find the paperwork and the actual indictment signed by the grand jury over at DougKrennick.com. I listed it there for you guys so you guys can check it out. Um, you'll also find the sources in the description below, of course. Uh, but let me break this down a little bit. In early January 2017, Leung and Sword told the media that Kealoha had voluntarily agreed to retire and that the commission and Kealoha had reached a retirement agreement. Not exactly false, not exactly true. There was some negotiations involved. So yes, he'd voluntarily agreed, but it's because he was being investigated and they didn't want him to sue, so they're trying to make it quick. However, on or about January 10th, when SWORD informed HPD personnel that the commission would pay the chief $250,000, HPD informed SWORD that it could not cover that expense from its own budget. I don't know who exactly told him this, but I do know that the acting chief at the time, Kerry Okamoto, who was a good dude, he was, um, he was in brass the whole time I was in the department. He was always good to me. Um, he was my major at one point, and I do remember working for him. He was always good to me. He might have been the one, but he was the one in charge. So the following day, Leung allegedly spoke privately with HPD's acting chief, Kerry Okamoto, who suggested going to the council, which is what you're supposed to do. So on a spend this big, when you're going to cut a check for 250 k they say, yo, you got to go to council. But that didn't happen, at least not right away. So Leung declined what he said, which is go to the council, and instead suggested that HPD could avoid the need for city council review by falsely claiming 
that HPD had used the money to hire new employees and then later request additional funding from the city council to make up for the shortfall. Essentially saying, listen, you have money in your coffer set aside to hire people. Use that money. Everyone will think you just hired more people because we hire 100 a year at the, at the Honolulu Police Department. So remember that. 100 people a year get hired at HPD. So you gotta, we're just going to take this 250 k we're going to pay out K-Law, and then people will just assume that we paid out salaries. And then when you have a salary shortfall, all we're going to do is ask city council for the money. And listen, city council's in on this. You're, we're good to go. Then they'll give you the money. No big deal. Doesn't make any headlines. That's the idea here. That's what they're alleging. Okimoto, Chief Okimoto, objects to that on the spot. But Leung, she still wanted to do it. She stayed persistent. On January 12th, the following day, so these are consecutive days. We're talking the 10th, the 11th, and now the 12th. The chair of the Honolulu City Council sent Sword a letter asking for a briefing on the commission's vote and questioning whether the commission planned to submit a proposed agreement to the council for review and approval. So essentially, the chair of the city council asked Sword for a letter. I'm sorry, sent Sword a letter asking for a briefing. Tell us what happened on the commission's vote. In the letter drafted by Donna Leung, Sword responded on January 13th, the very next day, declining the briefing and stating that approval was not required. So, city council, they could smell what was cooking in the kitchen. They knew there was something going on. They know that they, they want to pay out Kailoa to get him to go away, just to retire, so they can move on, start selecting a chief, all that good stuff. But when they ask for it, Max says, no, we don't need your approval. That's fishy. They knew it was fishy. It's probably why this whole thing went down the way it went down. So, S.W.O.R.D. also allegedly met with HPD officials that day on the 13th to again attempt to convince them that funds for the KLO payout should come from HPD. HPD officials said they didn't have the money without cutting services. This is why this is important because HPD, yes, the city spends millions of dollars. However, when we're talking about a police department, for them to cover this, they would have to cut certain services. They're already understaffed. So they said no to the police commission, which is kind of hard to do, to be honest with you, if you don't want a target on your back. You can burn bridges real fast, being the chief or anybody else, by telling the Honolulu Police Commission no. Now, the Honolulu Police Commission is not the police department's friend. Sorry. It's just not. However, it's not exactly an enemy. They're supposed to work together. But the Honolulu Police Commission does have a lot of oversight over the police department. That's what they're there for. So to tell them no is burning bridges. It can be career suicide. So I give the chief a lot of credit. He said, no, go to city council. I don't want nothing to do with this. Now we have multiple times that they're going to the police chief saying, yo, help us out. Let's meet in the middle here. They're trying to negotiate this one. They're mediating. Essentially, they're lobbying, which both of these were lobbyists in the past for outrigger. They know what they're doing. This is what they've been paid to do before. So, um, Leung arranged a call with S.W.O.R.D. and Okimoto and the Director of Budget and Fiscal Services to try to get this to go through, to try to get them to agree to it. She informed the others that the payment would come out of HPD's salary fund, and when HPD ran out of funds, the BFS Director would transfer money from the PVP account. That stands for a provision for vacant positions to HPD salary account. There is a provision for vacant positions at HPD and other, other places in the city. This isn't anything new. Um, I know that HPD, we have P numbers, position numbers that are not assigned, that are essentially 
unfilled P numbers that they use for different things and they can use to put someone in a spot where they're not a position number for, they don't have an extra spot for, but they'll send them in there. So that's basically what that is. They want to take it from an account that's a provision for vacant positions, essentially borrowing it, and try to slide it back in there. They want to make this transition smooth. That's the idea. Um, at the end of the quarter, the director of BFS would submit a report to the city council about the transfer and falsely state that it was needed for the hiring of a new officer to fill a vacant position. So this is where we start running in problems. Is basically they're saying, yo, we're gonna falsely state that it was needed for hiring an officer and then since you guys are gonna be short, we'll ask city council for more money. Sounds like a mess. That's why Kerry Okamoto didn't want anything to do with it especially amidst the Kailoa investigation. He knew something was coming down. I don't want nothing to do with this. So he says no again. He won't agree to it. Um, I already told you about the law. Remember, $100,000 is the threshold. Anything over $100,000 has to be approved by city council. Um, the court records in this case show that that payment was going to be divided into three amounts under $100,000, and we'll get into that later. So the $250,000 payout was approved during a January 18th, 2017 Honolulu Police Commission meeting during a closed executive session. The agreement called for Kealoa to, re to receive a lump sum payment of $250,000, of which $190,000 would be a severance payment, and $60,000 was fees, costs, and, expensive, and expenses. So... That's what was approved. The $250,000 payout approved on January 18th was a lump sum, meaning it would have to be approved by city council. On January 19th, Okimoto sent a letter to HPD personnel objecting to the use of the department funds for the payout, the story that was covered by the media. So, tried to keep him quiet, said, yo, let's not make this a big deal, let's not make this a scene. Okimoto says, nope told HPD personnel this is what they're trying to do. I don't approve of it. Trying to be out in the open with it, especially with the officers. So S.W.O.R.D. asked Okimoto to then call reporters to clarify his statement. But Okimoto said no. Basically telling him, yo, why don't you chill out with the verbiage? Okay, don't make it sound so dramatic. Don't make it sound like we're trying to go around you. But Okamoto said, no, I'm not making a statement to the news, to the press. So Amemiya then told the acting HPD chief that he was burning bridges by publicly objecting to Kelo's payout coming from HPD's budget. Saying, bro, you're making enemies here. Why you got to tell everybody you don't want to do this? Let's just show some solidarity. Okamoto said, nope. Blew the whistle on the whole thing. The city delivered Kealoa's check to Corp Council personnel on January 27, 2017, and it was later delivered to Kealoa's attorney. On February 1st, S.W.O.R.D. met with HPD officials and warned them not to make comments to the media about the Kealoa payment. Despite S.W.O.R.D.'s warning, HPD officials made their concerns public to the media about the Kealoa payment coming out of HPD's budget. So he keeps trying, and they keep saying no. On March 13th, HPD sent a letter to Leung seeking reimbursement from the Corp Council's office for the $250,000, a request that was ultimately denied. In May, the indictment said HPD submitted a proposed resolution to the city council to authorize a $720,000 transfer of funds to cover salary expenses. So, they paid it. They weren't going to be able to make budget. So, saying what they were going to do, HPD submits to city council a $720,000 request for funds to cover salary expenses. Although the shortfall was due in part to the unforeseen $250,000 cost of the payout, 
the resolution did not specifically mention the Kealoha pay payment. So they asked for 720, 250 of that was for Louis Kealoha's payout. What's that leave us? $470,000. So they just, they needed 470,000 anyway. So they asked for 720 to cover that payment. On May 23rd, Amamiya allegedly called Okimoto to confirm that he would not raise the topic of the Kealoha payment at the council's budgeting hearing. So Amamiya calls the chief and says, yo, I'm not going to bring this up. We're not going to talk about it at the budgeting hearing. They keep trying to squash it. Amamiya said he wanted to make sure that the Kealoha payout did not, quote, become a story. However, at the budget hearing on May 24th, an HPD deputy chief, I don't know which chief it was, was asked about the payment. So they're at the hearing. They didn't want to talk about it. Amemiya definitely did not want to talk about it. While they're at the meeting, somebody asked a, a deputy chief about the payment and disclosed that the funds HPD had requested from the council include, included the salary shortfall caused by Kealoha's payment, payout. So they, weren't gonna, they, they were told not to talk about it. He said, I promise you, I'm not bringing it up. It gets brought up anyway by somebody else. Ask the deputy chief, and the deputy chief says, okay, this is what happened. And he actually says it at the meeting. Amemiya later expressed his displeasure about what happened at that meeting. So that's that in a nutshell. Those are the things that transpired. They wanted to pay out Kealoha. They wanted to circumvent the process of getting it approved by going to city council. And they did that by trying to take it out of HPD's payroll and then not letting anybody know what they were doing. They wanted to break it up into three payments, come up with all these excuses, basically do what they want to do and ask for forgiveness later. That's what this was. That's where the fraud comes in. So, um, Leong's attorney um, addressed the media. Here's what she had to say. Um, Leong is further, so Leong, first of all, is accused of lying to federal agents because of this investigation. That's where it all started. Then they said she lied because she said there wasn't a conversation with the chief about trying to hide the funds or trying to get the funds approved. She said that's, that never happened. So now they're charging her with lying to the feds. Um, that was in November of 2017. But Leung's attorney is upset because Leung made arrangements to turn herself in. Now, we've all seen the video. We saw the video of Donna Leung in front of the FBI office in Kapolei. And she's in the car. She gets out of the car. FBI agents walk up to the car, have her turn around, put her hands behind her back. She's wearing her mask and they handcuff her and then walk her into their station, basically. Um, her attorney's upset because she made those arrangements, just like the other two did, to turn herself in. But somebody tips off the media for when she turned herself in. So she said, there is absolutely no reason for the theatrics which followed. Whoever tipped off the media so that Miss Leon could be filmed while being handcuffed should be ashamed of themselves. Lynn Panagakos is her name, Leong's attorney. She said the severance payment to Kalo was entirely legal and in the best interest of Honolulu because it quickly ended the former chief's tenure. It is beyond ironic that the same attorneys that prosecuted the Kaloas for corruption are now accusing Donna Leong for legal actions that she took in relation to the Honolulu Police Commission's decision to expeditiously separate former chief Kaloa from HPD for the benefit of HPD and the community to suggest that a legal severance payment that accomplished this goal was somehow a crime is absurd. I'll tell you what I think about that. Sword's attorney, William McCorriston, said in a statement that his client is shocked and disappointed by the charge and that he cooperated fully with the authorities. Sword was only following the legal advice of the Corporation Counsel's Office and the City Administration, including the budget and fiscal services. City council members, HPD and the public were allowed to give input 
and a commission vote overwhelmingly approved the settlement, McCorston said. Mr. Sword served as a volunteer on the Honolulu Police Commission for 10 years and has served on numerous boards and in other volunteer positions over the years and built a solid reputation for honesty, integrity, and service to the community, he said. We will vigorously defend Mr. Sword from this unjust charge, end quote. And then Roy Amamiya's attorney, uh, Lyle Hosuda, Hosoda, said his client is disappointed with the decision to pursue the charges he called false and baseless. The indictment itself shows that Mr. Amemiya was not involved in the decision regarding Chief Kealoha's disassociation and severance from HPD. Mr. Amemiya learned of this action at the same time the public learned through the news media. I'm bewildered, Amemiya said, because they're pursuing a case against me in a matter I was never involved in. Secondly, I'm angry because the federal law enforcement is challenging my ethics and my integrity. And then uh, we had two statements from former commissioners. Loretta Sheehan, a former Honolulu police commissioner, she was there when I was a police officer, who was only, the only one, the only one to vote against Kaloha settlement, said she never understood the sense of urgency people had to pay Kaloha or why the city needed to pay him at all. The commission could have conducted a four-cause termination hearing to honor his due process rights and then let him go. He may have sued for wrongful termination anyway, but she said, fine, let him sue. Oh, mahalo's for the super chat. Thank you for that. Ole, thank you so much. I appreciate you always showing support. Mahalo's, Le. Tell him I said what's up. Okay. Um, she said, I think we could win that lawsuit. Let him sue. Who cares? What is the rush? And everyone was thinking the same thing at the time. I remember that. I remember when they were trying to get him out. It's like, why did you rush it? He's going to sue anyway. You're going to pay him $250,000? And he's going to sue anyway? With how dirty this case was? Why would you risk it? And that's what Loretta Sheehan is saying. Um, I honestly don't remember being a fan of her when I was a police officer. I don't know why. But I agree with her here. It doesn't make sense. So, Sheehan remembers that the settlement was presented by Leung as a take it or leave it deal. She said she never heard anything about trying to circumvent the city council review process, but going to the council would have been a good idea. So she's saying, Leung brought it to her and said, yo, take the 250K or leave it. This is the opportunity we have. Let's take it. Let's cut them loose. She says, I never heard anything about trying to circumvent city council's ruling. Um, when you want to spend public money, public conversation is always a good idea. That's it right there. That's the principle that we all got to take away from this, that everybody in public service should understand. When you want to spend public money, a lot of public money, public conversation is always a good idea. You have to include a conversation in front of the people who are actually paying for this. People are struggling in Hawaii. They want to know where their money's going. All the money that they're paying into these taxes. Another former commissioner, Stephen Levinson, said he voted for the settlement to avoid a long and expensive litigation process with Kealoha. He too said that he never had any reason to believe that there was an effort to evade the city council. But he acknowledged that if council members had considered the payment it most likely would have been rejected. So we have multiple um, former commissioners that are saying, yo, first of all, we know that if it would have went to city council, it would have been denied. So we, they can see why you wouldn't want it to go to city council. But also that they never heard that this was about trying to circumvent the system. They also didn't think that it was appropriate to be rushing this thing. Just take it to the council. It's smart to do. If they deny it, who cares? What does HPD? HPD doesn't care if city council says no. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. If they would have voted for it to come out of HPD salary, then it comes out of HPD salary whether HPD wanted it to or not. They don't make those rules. 
He, uh, Levinson said he never knew exactly where the money for the payment came from, but that would it would come out of the HPD fund somehow anyways. And that's what we all think. It, eventually what it came out, out anyway. So what's the big deal? I don't see the rush. He said it didn't seem suspect to him. So both of them said it didn't seem suspect. And then on the last statement we have is on the Shopo president, Bobby Cavaco. I worked with Bobby. Um, solid dude. He's a solid dude. I'm glad he represents them. He's the president of the police officers union. He applauded the charges. He said, these federal indictments demonstrate that no one is above the law and the Honolulu taxpayers deserve justice for being defrauded by these so-called leaders. Our police department is incredibly understaffed and there are not enough patrol officers now to try and keep our neighborhoods safe. For these accused felons to have taken money budgeted to hire more police officers and use it to pay off, a failed former police chief is sickening. I mean, that's it. That's the gem that no one had said yet. You guys, there were 2,000 police officers, full-time police officers working for the police department, but there were 2,300 slots the last time that I had looked. Just try to think for a moment, just on the island of Oahu, what 300 more police officers would do. There are 2,000 police officers that work every single day on Oahu. Imagine having 15% more. 300. To those areas that want more police that are saying, yo, we're having some crime we need to deal with, the Pupus, Kalihi, D8 and Waianae. And the fact that I'm not kidding you. If you need help and you're out in, say, Kaava, let's say you're out in Kahuku, and you need help, and you're fighting somebody, or you're in a gunfight, or you're getting attacked, you know how long you gotta wait for backup? You know how long you gotta wait for cover? That's one district, Kahuku to Kailua. One district. You could use some policemen out there. And to not use that money for that, but then to pay off KLA, and then lie about it, that does hurt the police officers. They need more support. And that sounds like you're trying to cut their throats. They have mandatory minimums on staffing. In District 1, it was 16, I believe. Where if you fell below 16, they had to call in somebody in overtime. And it happened. Out of the 22 spots. I remember working with 12. All the time. Imagine if they actually had more officers. But instead they're using it for stuff like this. It's hard to get them to pass for us to actually hire more. They are now because they're hurting for policemen. And that's why the president said that. Ali Silvert, a former federal public defender who cracked the KLO conspiracy case and represented the man the KLOs framed for stealing their home mailbox, said there has been a long suspicion around how KLO's $250,000 payment was made. Remember, this is the dude that reported to the FBI about what happened when the mailbox thing happened. They could have just gone to the city council and presented this, and I just don't understand why they didn't do that. There's got to be more to the story, he said. I'm extremely gratified that finally things are moving forward, but this is nowhere near the end. Covering up where the money came from begs the question, why didn't they just go to the council for approval? What did Chief Kealoha know? What dirt did he have on them 
that he needed to be paid off in this matter, said Silver. It makes it look like hush money. Former Mayor Kirk Caldwell, who appointed all three defendants to their former positions, referred questions to his attorney, Lex Smith, but Smith issued a statement saying, Amemia, Leong, and Sword are innocent unless and until proven guilty, and that he will be interested in the coming days and weeks to understand the charges that have been brought against them. Jury selection is set to start March 14th. So what is that? Two months from today, they are doing jury selection. And unfortunately, anybody who's watching this video will be ineligible for jury selection just for watching this video. So if you don't want to be in jury selection and you know someone that doesn't want to be in jury selection, share the video. You'll be disqualified. Um, these charges come as federal authorities continue to investigate former city prosecutor Keith Kaneshiro as a part of a separate probe. So that's, those are the facts. The question that I think a lot of people are going to have is why now? Why are we waiting f almost five years? Well, the statute of limitations is running out. Listen, I don't think they have much. I don't think they have much on these guys. I really don't. But they had probable cause to arrest, which means they have statements and or recordings of people saying that these people tried to circumvent the system. That's what this means. So what do we really have? We don't have actually what they're alleging. We won't have proof beyond a reasonable doubt yet of this. But what we do have is probable cause. It probably happened is a basic way of putting it. A reasonable person under reasonable conditions who is law abiding would agree that these things probably happened. So, to me, Leong, Sword, and Amemia, they're being chased, they're being charged based on their actions, the things that they did. We don't know intent yet, and that's gonna be the murky part. Intent is definitely going to be used to convict. So they're being accused of conspiring, working together to get around the procedures for spending taxpayer money to pay out Chief Louis Kelo. So that's what being, they're being accused of. Conspiring to mislead the public and the city so as to make it easier to pay the former chief his severance. The FBI is charging them based on those facts. The problem is they're gonna need intent to convict. And I think that's where it gets murky. I think they're using this to make people talk. This is embarrassing. This can be career ending. And Amemiya's got a son in politics. Like there's a lot that is weighing on this. This could be a lengthy trial. The FBI wants help. They want more people to talk more people to say things about what happened. That's what this is here. If you ask me, it's a fishing expedition. Um, they also probably want to people to be scared. Kaneshiro and guys like that. If I had to guess, that's what this is. They're going after Kaneshiro. They want to take everybody down. You better come to us and tell us what you know or we're going to come looking for you even on conversations about trying to get around the selection process and the approval process for city council. Something as many as what, they, what it seems that they have done. And I think it could go either way. I'm just being honest. Two years from now, when this is all over, I think it could be either, either way. But they may owe Uncle Louie a favor. That could be true. We don't know. But that could be true. What if he knows something? Or what if they owe him a favor? And that's what this was. It's possible one of them did that. Owed him or he knew something about them. Yes, it's possible. 
We don't know that yet. That's how it looks. It looks like hush money, the way they rushed it when they didn't need to. But it could just look like that. But they also could have just been trying to make things run smoother. I remember the panic when it was like, what are we doing? We got to get rid of this. There's like mad drama right now. It's all over the news. Remember, we didn't know all the stuff we know now. But at the time, it was like, this is sketchy. So like, get him out of office. And at first, if you remember, he didn't want to go nowhere. I don't know if you guys remember this, but at first, everyone was calling for him to step down. And he was like, nope. Not stepping down. He, he hung in there for a long time. He really did. And they were like, yo, let's get rid of him. But could it be that they wanted to get rid of him because the longer he stayed there, the bigger platform he had? The longer the lawsuit, the more names he could drop? Because when you think about it, I'd like to think that's... I'd like to think it's the case that they're just trying to get rid of him. However, we got stories of Catherine Kaylor snorting lines of coke off Uncle Louie's desk. I mean, once you hear that, once you picture Catherine Kaylor snorting a line off of Uncle Louie's desk at the police station. Plus, you got all the drugs from her brother. All the scripts he was writing. I mean, I used to be the guy who was just like, listen, it ain't, it's not what it seems. Because it usually not. You usually, make it, you usually look like a fool when you jump to those conclusions. Because most of the times, the dirty stuff looks clean and the clean stuff looks dirty. It's usually backwards all the time. But what do you do when you got the deputy prosecutor snorting lines of coke off the police chief's desk while they're trying to frame her brother for stealing a mailbox so they don't get caught with all the money they stole from Grandma Puana. Purple Pigeon said, and Sam Capoy got 18 years while Louie and Catherine got 7 and 13. Yo, that's a good point. He almost got more than both them put together. Based on the way things have been going in Hawaii politics, we got to assume some nefarious activities are taking place. And let's hope we get to the bottom of it soon. I think this case is going to help that. I think this case is going to help us get to the bottom of all the stuff that everybody's talking about. This is the tip of the iceberg. We're, we'll see what happens. I don't have much faith that... I don't have much faith that this is better than it actually seems. I think it's about right. It's about spot on. How many times can you think, I think this is really happening, and then you see it happen on the news a year later? After time and time again, you start to think, yo, maybe it is what it looks like. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Go ahead and leave a comment. Like and share the video if you enjoyed or learned a little something. Um, patrons, thank you guys. I love you, man, and you guys always been awesome. I will see you guys Monday night. Don't forget about Monday night. We are breaking down the Xerox shootings. You're not going to want to miss that one. That was a big one. So I know you guys uh, got a lot going on. You got busy lives, so I'm not going to keep you too long. Thank you guys for coming out. You guys are the best. I had a blast. We'll see what this, what happens, what comes to all this coming up here pretty soon. I got a couple of videos that I'm working on right now, so stay tuned to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you know when I drop them. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Until the next time. Allah.